Hey, it's Darius Clark, and I-75 now offers the Enrolled Agent Exam. So if you're taking EA 1, 2, or 3, get yourself on I-75, where the right teacher makes all the difference. And today we're going to cover a tough topic in EA 2, which is partnership basis. Contributing assets to partnerships. What about gain? What about fair market value? What if the partnership sells the asset later on? And what about someone contributing services in exchange for a partnership interest? These are all partnership topics on EA2. So get on I-75 with Darius Clark and be home soon. This one asks, what is Bella's basis in the partnership? So Bella acquires a 50% interest in a partnership by contributing property with a basis of 10000 and a fair value of 50000 the property was subject to a liability of 30000 which the partnership assumed. What's Bella's basis in the partnership? It's zero. Now, it would start out with a $10,000 rollover basis, but we'd have to subtract the $30,000 debt relief, and that would equal a negative basis of 20000 and you're not allowed to have a negative basis. So that's going to trigger a gain. But before the gain's recognized, partner Bella gets to add 15000 to her negative basis. Why? 50% of the $30,000 mortgage that's assumed by the partnership, Bella is responsible for. So we can add 15,000 to the negative 20,000 and now she only has a basis of negative 5,000. And this is gonna cause a $5,000 gain because we need to bring her basis up to zero. Therefore, she has a gain of 5,000 and a zero basis in the partnership. Jan acquires a 50% interest in a partnership by contributing property at a basis of $10,000 and a fair value of $40,000. The property was subject to a liability of $26,000, which the partnership assumed. How much gain does Jan recognize? And the answer is it's a $3,000 gain that Jan recognizes, and that's all because of the mortgage. The fact that the property was subject to a liability of $26,000 and when you subtract the 26,000 from Jan's basis of 10,000, Jan's basis goes below zero to 16,000, a negative 16,000. Well, negative basis is not allowed. But before gain is recognized, we add to Jan's negative $16,000 basis her share of that $26,000 mortgage. Because she's a 50% partner and the partnership is liable for the mortgage, that means Jan's liable for half that mortgage. So add 13,000 to her negative basis. So add 13 to a minus 16,000. And what's her negative basis now? Minus 3,000. So because it's minus 3,000, we have to bring it up to zero. And the only way to do that is a $3,000 gain is triggered. So the answer is letter A, a $3,000 gain for Jan. And she has a zero basis in the partnership. And it's all because the debt relief was so much greater than her original basis. Notice we ignored the fair value of 40,000 completely. That's just distractor. Because when assets go into a partnership, they always go in at basis. We never look at the fair value. And there's usually no gain. The only reason there's a gain here is because of the liability. The debt relief is what triggered the gain. Arnold provides services to a partnership during the year in exchange for a capital interest of 25% worth $40,000. So it looks like his 25% of the partnership is worth 40,000. The services that he's providing are valued at 50,000, but he's to receive only the 25% capital interest, no cash. Arnold's basis in the partnership is how much, and Arnold must recognize ordinary income of how much. And the answer is 40,000. So the basis is 40,000, and it's all ordinary income for Arnold. Because when someone performs a service, the fair value of what they receive is ordinary income. And what did Arnold receive? 25% of the partnership and they told us it was worth 40,000. Notice that the services are valued at 50,000, but that's not what Arnold received. So that's why 50,000 is not relevant, but 40,000 is because that's what was received for performing the services. On June 1st, year one, Murray contributed land in exchange for a 20% partnership interest in Madison Partners. The fair market value of the land at that time was 60,000 and Murray's adjusted basis was 20,000. So Murray is helping 
to form Madison Partners. And he's putting in land, getting a 20% partnership interest. And that all happens on June 1st, year one. A few years later, on October 5th of year four, Madison distributed that land to another partner. So the partnership took that land that Murray had contributed and distributed it to a different partner. The fair market value at the time was 65,000. What is the amount of Murray's recognized gain? Murray, the partner that contributed that land. What's Murray's recognized gain from the transfer of the land by Madison to that other partner? And the answer is 40,000, letter A. Generally, no gain is recognized when assets are contributed to a partnership with a built-in gain. Notice there's a built-in gain at the time this land was contributed, the basis to Murray was 20,000, the fair market value was 60,000. And we're not saying there was a gain on June 1st, year one, because when Murray contributed the land, there was no gain that day. But if the partnership sells the land within seven years of contribution, you have to know that that would trigger that built-in gain and the whole gain will be taxable to Murray because the partner who contributed the asset recognizes gain to the extent of the excess of fair value over basis at the date of contribution. For this reason, Murray recognizes a $40,000 gain when the asset is transferred to a different partner. This is to prevent people from forming a partnership simply to avoid gift taxes. Without the seven year rule, the IRS would look at the transfer like it's a gift from Murray to the other partner. Because what if the other partner was Murray's daughter? Then the IRS looks at this and says, hey Murray, you only formed this partnership so that you could give that land to your daughter. And that's why the rule is the partnership must hold the asset for seven years if they don't want to recognize that gain. And if you enjoyed that style of learning, go to cpaexamtutoring.com and click on EA Review. And then you can pull down part one, part two, or part three. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, and be home soon. Because the right teacher makes all the difference.